I was going to do a video where FC24 would predict how the Premier League season ended. I'd edited the table to be the exact same as it is in real life after 30 matches, but in one of the 10 simulations I did, something very strange happened. Aston Villa overcame their 8 point difference to 3rd place, and they finished level on points with Manchester City in 2nd place. This got me thinking, could I actually win the league from the position Villa are in today? Well that's what we're going to find out. I've modded in the exact table that the Premier League has today, with the same amount of wins, same amount of points and same goal difference, and today I'm going to see how close to the title this Aston Villa side can get. We've got 8 games to make up 11 points on Liverpool, 9 points on Arsenal and 8 on Manchester City. Do you want to know the best news? It's that we still got to play all three of these teams. Our first game of the eight we're playing is actually against Manchester City, so it doesn't get much bigger than this. If we win today, we have a chance at the title. If we lose or draw, we might as well end the video. So let's see what we can do. This match is literally happening in a couple of hours from the time that I'm recording this video, but I feel like Aston Villa have a much better chance of winning in FIFA than they do in real life. The Manchester City team is actually fairly weak to pace in the game, so Diaby and Watkins up front do have a decent chance of scoring. One of the things we couldn't change when we were modding the table though is how many goals each player had scored, and Diaby only has 4 and somehow Ollie Watkins only has 11, they're both doing much worse than they did in real life, but let's hope that form doesn't carry over into this match. You can see the league table at the top of the screen right there, everything is to play for in this match, we can get the lead of Manchester City down to just 5 points if we can win. But of course, Haaland and De Bruyne are going to be massive parts of this match. De Bruyne dancing around is right there, and Haaland getting shoved off the ball by Pau Torres, some great defending from Villa. Of course, Man City are going to keep attacking, they're still trying to get first place in this league. Phil Foden doing some tricks down the wing, and yet again, Pau Torres way too strong for Foden. We get a counter-attack from a corner, Diaby against Doku, and there's only going to be one winner, one-on-one -on -one with Edison, and we're going to finesse that straight past him into the far corner. A good goal, nice 1-0 lead, and it's exactly what we wanted just before half-time. In fact, Man City would get to kick the ball one more time, and that would be the first half finished. All we had to do now is keep the form going into the second half and then try and beat Arsenal and Liverpool in our games against them. Watkins had a nice shot right there. The new camera angle I'm trying out proving how nice of a shot that was. Watkins linking up with the Abbey from the edge of the box. Another forced good punch there from Edison. Honestly, we're all over them in the second half. They try and attack down the wings and Pau Torres is stopping everything. We're playing this like it's an older FIFA, just relying on pure pace, but unfortunately for us, Gvardial has just enough to stop Diaby getting through yet again. Conter against Alvarez out wide. They have Acuna, Nunez, who they've just brought in. Of course, he's playing Birmingham for Wolves. Silva gets absolutely smashed. I love that level of commitment, that level of desire from our midfielders. Great there from Pau Torres as well, blocking Nunez's shot. But we head it straight back to Haaland. We have to block this. Oh no, it's rolled out for a corner. Are Manchester City going to break our hearts in the first match of this challenge? Bernardo Silva taking the corner. He's already scored 21 goals this season, Bernardo. He's their top scorer. He's got more than Haaland. And we're going to get the first win of the season. That means we're now just five points behind Manchester City with seven games to go. We could still do it. We could still get that title. Out of the remaining seven games, Brentford are going to be our lowest ranked team we're going to have to face. So after beating City and keeping a clean sheet, I'm pretty confident that we can win this one. It's also our first home game, so let's get those points and keep the pressure on Manchester City. I don't know if you quite realise this, but Manchester City had already played in that table I showed you just a second ago, and they had already won, so we absolutely had to win this one. Not a great start though, when Ivan Tony smashes it past our 86 rated Emiliano Martinez. We want to get a goal back as soon as possible of course, gives us the best chance of going on to win this game. So Diaby smashing it in from the edge of the box is exactly what we wanted. I always thought this guy was just going to be pure pace on FIFA, but he's actually really technical and really good at shooting, which is honestly quite surprising for me. He nearly scored a second one right there, we got a cross in, but Flecken's going to always catch that one. We're going to keep the pressure at Matty Cash, has Leon Bailey in front of him, finds him, he cuts around the defender, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. We should really be aiming for the side netting right there, that should be 2-1. You can't waste chances like that when you're playing on Legendary, because Brentford will just go down the other end and score their second goal with their second shot. What a tight angle that was for Mbermo. As we know from our Stad Daran Karimo, that guy knows how to score goals. With just six games left after this one, we absolutely need a second half comeback. And shooting like that from Ollie Watkins 
isn't going to help. But this tackle from Diaby gives us an amazing situation. And finally, Oli Watkins scores a goal for Aston Villa. That was all about Moussa Diaby winning the ball high up the pitch, using his pace and also a pretty nice cutback. But the finish was decent too. But we've still subbed him off for John Durant. And he's running down the ring right now. He's got Zaniolo out wide. We're going to volley this. And somehow we find the top corner and the side netting. Nicolo Zaniolo, the Italian, scoring probably the best goal of the season will score this year because hitting that on the volley, the half volley because it bounced just before it came over is such an unlikely goal and it's going to turn out to be the winning goal as well. A 3-2 comeback win, we were 1-0 down, we were 2-1 down but we have the heart, we have the passion. The fans are loving it too, getting their scarves out and we keep that gap to Manchester City at just five points. All we need now is two losses from them and two wins from us and we can overtake them, get that third place. But look who our next match is against. It's Arsenal, the current league leaders and Emmy Martinez is former employers. We need him to be on top form if we're going to get anything from this because Martinelli, Odegaard and Saka are three of the hardest players I've ever played against on FC24. I think every time I've played against Arsenal, at least one of them has scored a goal, but usually all three. And we're going to need to be absolutely on it to win this match. Kamara finding Watkins. Nice bit of space out here for John McGinn. He ball rolls it past Saliba. We've got Diaby, but we're going to hit it instead. That was a bit of a mistake. We should have gone for the obvious option passing it to Diaby but corner comes in and it's headed over the bar so we're on top in the first 10 minutes Arsenal choosing to play Partey over Rice and his lack of pace could get exposed if we can get anywhere near him but if you look at the table in the top left of the screen you'll see Manchester City have won their early kickoff Liverpool have won their early kickoff and we're yet again eight points behind them so we absolutely have to win this match right now if we don't then I think it's pretty much goodbye to the challenge. Odegaard 101, and that is the first nail in our coffin. We've done comebacks before, of course, but not against the team as good as Arsenal. Odegaard again, a couple of minutes later. Jorginho finds Jesus, a flick back to Zinchenko, back to Jesus, and Martinez should be saving that, in my opinion, and that's 2-0 after 34 minutes. In fact, Saka would make it 3-0 and somehow I think I might have deleted the clip where he scored. But trust me, he just dribbled around about four or five of my players. A bit like we're trying to do with John McGinn right here, except he was actually successful. Diaby trying another shot from the edge of the box. And I think we really have to score from this corner if we want to get back into this match. Bailey gets the ball in. We tried to do an overhead kick, but nothing comes from it. McGinn dribbles it out wide and we're going to smash a low cross in. If Watkins had found the back of the net there just before half time, I would have thought we had some chance of winning this match. But I've now skipped to the 82nd minute because nothing really happened for either team between half time and now. And you can see the kind of counter attacks Arsenal are doing. Declan Rice coming on as a sub trying to chip our goalkeeper. Thank God it wasn't one of their actual attackers. And instead it was their defensive midfielder. But as we're begging for the referee to blow the whistle and put us out of our misery from one of the biggest collapses we've done this season... I think we're going to have to confirm that the title isn't on this year. So the rest of this video is all about trying to finish second. That first half performance really did take the wind out of our sails because after the end of the match, all three of the teams above us had won. I'd say that any chance of winning the title is now gone, but we can still finish second or third. We followed up the Arsenal game with two 2-1 wins, but it did put a ton of pressure on our next match against Liverpool. Because we have the game in hand, we can still just about catch Liverpool, but I think goal difference is heavily in their favour. We'd have to win a couple of matches by 6 or 7 nil, and also hope that we can beat Liverpool 6 or 7 nil in this game. So, of course, we're going to have to go fully gung-ho. We're going all-out attack from minute one. Of course, we are the home team, so we do have the halt end firmly cheering us on. But we're going to need more than that. We're going to need an absolute miracle if we want to finish anything other than fourth. And we kind of get one right here. We made a mistake doing a fake shot, but Becker goes straight through the back of Diaby's legs. And we win a penalty in the 18th minute. Who knows, maybe this will force Liverpool to keep attacking. There'll be a lot of gaps and then we can go on to get a few goals against them. Watkins finds the top corner. Absolutely amazing penalty. I think even if Becker had dived the right way, there's no way that Alisson is saving that. Well, okay, this is a good start, so we can still kind of finish at least joint third, even if we would be technically fourth on goal difference, which would be a decent season, I guess. But before we even got to half time, Cody Gakpo's right boot would equalize the game. A nice shot that was, to be fair. Mid-height, the goalkeeper could have saved it, but it was still a very powerful shot. 
we kept pressing. Of course, we want to win this match, but I think you can probably tell at this part of the video that we don't actually finish the challenge in anything other than fourth place, which is exactly where we took over the team. So it's probably the expected finish, and we haven't performed any miracles. That was nearly a nice goal there from Diaby, though, dribbling past Van Dijk, but he's one of those defenders that always seems to stop you in real life and, of course, on FIFA. Salah dribbling around, giving it to Endo, a back heel to Soboschlei. Finally, we get the save that Emi Martinez, we know he's capable of doing. Salah cutting in from the right wings, always going to be a big threat. Pau Torres doesn't have the pace, and that is going to be Liverpool in the lead. I like that Liverpool did try and go for the kill in this one, to be fair, because it is Klopp's last season, and they are still in the title hunt. So sometimes the AI does like to sort of let you off the hook when they don't think that you're a threat. Not in this game, they went fully for the kill and they went fully for trying to win the title, which was nice to see. They confirmed the win right here. We simmed the last two games and we confirmed a fourth place finish. Because we've lost this match, we now have way too big of a gap to Liverpool that I am officially calling the end of this challenge. It's going to be a fail for us, but I think if you could hold off that unstoppable Arsenal attack and not collapse like we did to Liverpool, then I do think it would be possible for Villa to actually win the title. We ended the season firmly in fourth place, which I'm sure every single Aston Villa fan would be happy with, but it was mainly because Watkins didn't have quite as good of a season as he is doing in real life that I think we did fail this challenge. Bernardo Silva somehow scored 25 goals goals and that probably proves the career mode isn't the best simulator when it comes to predicting the Premier League title. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'm going to do something similar but with Luton Town, Burnley or Sheffield United in the next couple of days so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Cheers and goodbye.